Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of a College Rundown. I'm Vinny Servino, College Supervisor with Perfect Game. Joining me is Jeremy Brown, Perfect Game's National Scouting Crosschecker. Another weekend in the books of college. A lot of craziness happening, but not so much at the top, really. Most no. of the top-ranked teams uh, stayed still in terms of chalk. Um, top five is still all SEC schools. Arkansas took care of business. Uh, Vanderbilt went down to Oklahoma State took two of three from a ranked opponent, and as such, raised it to number two. But besides that, Florida, Mississippi, Mississippi State, all remaining pretty still, uh, taking care of business and getting ready for SEC play that starts next week. The Vandy OK State game was one that we had circled. It was kind of Vanderbilt's first true test, so to speak, not to detract from anybody they had played, but Oklahoma State had proven themselves early this early, early in the spring already. So not only did Vanderbilt go on the road, they took two of three from them. And of course, you, you got to lead the conversation off with Kumar and Jack Leiter, and the, the one-two punch that everybody knows about in college baseball. If you have the smallest pulse of collegiate baseball, you know about that duo. And just to keep things simple, short, not to beat a dead horse, they're really good. They proved it once again, missed a ton of bats, showed the premium stuff that is going to keep them jockeying back and forth in discussions for the 1-1 pick. And you're going to have Team Kumar, you're going to have Team Leiter, but at the end of the day, they're both Team Vanderbilt, and Tim Corbin has to love sending that duo out every weekend. Yeah, not to mention Isaiah Thomas, three home runs over the weekend. Pretty good for the offense there. Absolutely. We are heading into the spring, heard a lot about him having a big fall, and he's, he's pivotal to that offense. Yeah, just in terms of some of the other top teams around the SEC, you know, uh, Arkansas had a crazy first game against La Tech. Uh, which, by the way, great job at kind of rebuilding that facility, rebuilding that stadium. It looks gorgeous. They had excited crowds. But Jalen Battles hit one, like, over the dorms in La Tech to win uh, in extra innings on Friday night. And then uh, LSU had a crazy game on Saturday night with uh, UTSA. Uh, Two extra inning comebacks. You know, Kate Doty ties the game. It was a three-run home run in the ninth inning. End up going 13 and walking it off, too. Um, Another series that caught our eye was that Louisville swept Boston College in a meeting of ranked matchups. If you want to touch a little bit on the Cardinals there. That's one that heading into the weekend, you could have seen BC taking two of three. You also could have gone and seen what we did see with Louisville taking the series. BC didn't have Cody Morris set. But at the same time, what Louisville did get was some Alex Pinellas barrels, a big three-run home run, and I believe game two. And then Henry Davis just continues to keep hitting. Even since he was a prep, we knew about the catch and throw. It's elite behind the plate, but he went four for five one game. He's batting like just shy of 500 on the year, hit another home run, saw a couple balls were knocked down by wind that could have gotten out. And he continues to steadily rise up draft boards. And the discussion with the Louisville offense almost begins with him now. So that's one you definitely want to keep an eye on. Yeah, and in addition to Davis, obviously, the two big kind of returns they're going to get to is Alex Pinellas. It's his first home run of the weekend. That's going to be a key catalyst for the Louisville Cardinals to kind of get him going. And also they return Glenn Albanese this weekend to the starting rotation. So another kind of piece that Louisville sorely needed, I think, on the pitching side of things. Uh, Shifting gears a little bit to the Big Ten, you know, Indiana goes ahead and sweeps Penn State this weekend. They join the top ten now. Uh, I want to talk about McCade Brown, kind of in his performance. He's really vaulting himself into that first round conversation. He goes seven innings, no hits allowed, 16 strikeouts. One of the best pitches in college baseball is his hammer 12 6 curveball. Uh, you know, kind of, he had some questions coming into the year just in terms of limited track record, consistency throwing strikes, because the stuff is certainly there and he's certainly proven so far. 14, you know, 14 innings in the year, only three hits allowed, 28 strikeouts, just two walks. So he, he's a guy who's definitely rising up boards right now with his strong start. Yeah, I know he was one you and Brian Sikowski had ranked pretty good, kind of higher than the consensus, consensus around the country. And then he kind of goes and shows the improvements you were hoping to see along with the curveball, along with the big velocity. So he's uh, definitely cementing himself up there. Yeah, and then we'll uh... – you know, looking at some of the new teams, uh, one team in particular started the year in the preseason rankings, stumbled a little bit, now back, Texas Longhorns. Texas is back, Jeremy. Uh, you know, they, they, sweep, uh, they sweep South Carolina at home, uh, looked really, really good at doing so. Uh, Ty Madden was terrific on Friday night, opposite of Thomas Farr, obviously, Saturday. Uh, 
Tristan Stevens does a heroic job kind of on Saturday. He really does a good job pitching, mixing the power slider. Um, the Longhorns go 3-0 against a team that was previously unbeaten and as such rejoined the rankings here at 15. No doubt. Another team joining the new rankings is uh, Oregon, following their second straight impressive conference victory. Um, oh, I'm sorry, their first conference victory, their second impressive series victory after sweeping UCSB, who was ranked number 11. Mm-hmm. They go to, they go and beat Oregon State two of three, join the rankings. Uh, and then a couple other teams you got, you know, Notre Dame winning another ACC series, Tennessee looking hot, starting out SEC play amongst a couple others. So a lot of new teams joining as we get ready to open conference play in the majority of the country outside of obviously, you know, the ACC who's been playing since week two. Yeah. And the one other team we got in there, UNC took swept Clemson at home. As we had talked about, they got a bona fide ace and Austin love Friday night's going to give them a chance yeah. throughout ACC play. Justice Thompson has been as good, if not better than advertised this fall. Danny Soretti's doing Danny Soretti things at shortstop at the plate. And like we had kind of talked about, they have a variety of ways in which they can beat you and still keep the, the, the pedal to the floor moving forward through ACC play. Yeah, well, looking ahead to next week, you know, we have a lot of matchups, obviously. Like I mentioned earlier, SEC play starts. So, you know, a lot of these top-ranked teams in the country, uh, you know, that top five sure to shake up. And I'm sure we're bound to have more teams enter and exit pretty quickly as we have the last couple of weeks. So, No doubt. You got to love early seasons in baseball. <laughs> well, thanks again, Jeremy, for joining me. And uh, we're looking forward to another week of college baseball, and we'll see you guys next week. Can't wait.